come to the time in our service where each week we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We're going to be looking at two places in God's Word this morning. So if you don't have a copy of God's Word, uh, the men will hand it out. Can you just raise your hand to let them know that you need one? And if you don't have a copy of your own, please take that. It's our gift to you. So the night before Jesus died, he was eating the Passover with his disciples, and he gave us a memorial meal. He gave us, he told us that this bread that we're going to eat and a cup are reminders of his body and blood that were given for us. So open up your Bibles to Mark 14, verse 40, and we're going to hear Mark's telling of the start of this meal. Mark 14, verse 40. Jesus, it, as they were eating, it said, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them. And he said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they drank of it, and he said, This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many. So the night before Jesus died, he established a memorial meal that Christians could eat when we gather together. A reminder for us of him. And when we take the bread and the cup in a few minutes... Just remember that this is a reminder of Jesus. This is not some religious ceremony. It's, it, you can grow so comfortable with what we do each and every week. Fight in your heart. Preach to your mind that this is a reminder of Jesus. Just like on Memorial Day, which we celebrated last week, we look back in memory of the one who gave his life so that we might have life. You see, Jesus... God who created all things, he rules all things, sustains all things. He is the one by whom and for whom all things were created. He is the perfect and eternal one, the one against whom we all have sinned. That's why our sin is so bad, and he is the judge of our sins in whose presence sinful ones cannot stand. That one, that sinless God, actually became man. And he became man in Jesus Christ to die for our sins. On the cross, God the Son, Jesus, took our sins on himself so that all who believe could be forgiven and be declared righteous in God's sight. So we're going to take a piece of bread representing his body that hung there and a cup of juice reminding of his blood that was spilt and we remember him and his death. However, our remembering isn't merely looking back 2,000 years ago. It must include that. But in every account in the Bible where Jesus is establishing the Lord's Supper, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, Luke twenty two sixteen, Matthew twenty six twenty nine, and then as we continue in Mark in verse twenty five of chapter fourteen, Jesus speaks. He looks forward, speaking of his return. We don't remember merely a man who died, but we look, we remember one who died, and will return. Jesus said, truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. See, Jesus didn't only die for our sins, but he was raised and he is coming back. And we will actually get to eat and drink with him when he establishes his earthly millennial reign and on into eternity. So let's guide our looking forward remembering of Jesus in light of what we remember that he did in the past. Let's guide our looking forward by looking really quickly at Revelation chapter 1. 
We're going to see how Jesus reveals himself at the beginning of the book where he reveals his coming again. I wish we had time to look into more of this, but we will just look at quickly how Jesus describes himself. And then I encourage you to do what I'm shepherding my own heart here, where a lot of times I will look back and remember Jesus who died for me without thinking of his coming again like I should. And so let's look forward to his return. Read with me Revelation 1, verse 5. John describes Jesus as Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. That when John remembers Jesus and he's laying out who this book is about, he says Jesus is the faithful witness. That's an allusion to Psalm 89. If you're on McShane's plan, you read that yesterday. Do you remember? It's that Jesus is going to reign on David's throne as the forever king in the Old Testament. He's that faithful witness spoken of in Psalm 89. He's the firstborn of the dead. The dead don't stay dead. Because Jesus died and rose again, all those who Jesus purchased through his death will be raised to eternal life. Jesus is just the first. He's the first fruit to the wonderful harvest of life purchased through his death. And Jesus is the ruler of kings on earth. All power is subservient All power on earth now is subservient power. And when Jesus comes back to reign, you see in Revelation 19, 16, it states that he will wear the title emblazoned on his robe and tattooed on his thigh that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This powerful one who is going to return, he's sitting on, he's going to sit on David's throne, the one who we will get to eat and drink this meal with in the future. It's that powerful one we remember. And John goes on. He goes on to tell the churches who he writes to of this, that this powerful coming one is the one who loves us and has freed us, verse 5 and on into 6, freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, This all-powerful king, believer, loves you personally and gave his life to free you from your sins. You can't think of Jesus' death without thinking of his return, and you shouldn't think of his return without basing all of your hope on his death. So when the bread and the juice come, hold them and remember Jesus, the one who created everything, the one who came to save us from our sins, the one who is coming again. Verse 7, behold, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes on earth will wail or mourn on account of him. This is not a matter of personal belief merely. We remember physical With these physical reminders, we remember objective facts, physical realities that happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus died. We also remember objective reality, physical facts that will happen when he returns. This is true whether you believe it or not. But when Jesus returns, your belief matters very much. You see, Jesus will return to gather to himself all those who have believed in him, those who depend on him for their only hope when they stand before him as judge. If you would put your faith in Jesus, if you say, I have no other hope in the face of my sin to stand before a righteous God, and, and I love that God. If, you, if that's your testimony and you're a Christian, take the bread and the juice when it comes. However, if by your own admission, you're not, It doesn't change the fact that Jesus is coming. So I beg with you, just please repent of your sins and put your faith in this one. This Jesus who gave his life for you so that you could have eternal life with him. Put your faith in him. But if if not, let the bread and juice pass. Please don't leave here without talking to me. Really anybody you see around here who does take that bread and the juice. 
Men, please come serve us. Take to the communion on your own, and I'll close us in prayer in a few minutes.